This week we're back and we have our take on the Treasure Hunter exploit, analyze actions taken by Jagex, and speculate as to the reasoning behind the news post detailing those actions. The JMods also look back at 19 years of RuneScape and we talk about their highs and regrets. This is RSBNB Update, episode 759, recorded Thursday, January 29th, 2020, 19 years and counting. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update, the first of 2020 and the first of the new decade. Tannis and myself are back. Thanks, Shane. God Can't willing, wait. of course. It's a big year, man. It is, it is. And yeah. I mean, we'll have plenty of time to discuss everything that's going to be happening in 2020 as we move forward. We got a bit of a preview of that in uh, the Christmas message um, that was posted on Christmas Eve and the year ahead from Maud Warden on the 19th, which you guys heard about on the last regularly scheduled episode of 2019. But in case you're joining us for the first time, I am Shane12088, and of course he is Tennis79, and you know, this is our first time recording since I believe it was um, Thursday the 20th. Or something around that. Is that right? Was that? Yeah, it's been a couple weeks. It was the weeks. Thursday before Christmas. Yeah, it was something a nice like break, that. man. Did you did you enjoy your break? Um, you know what's really interesting about that is starting on Christmas Eve, I got this little tickle in the back of my throat, and my throat was clogged up on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Boxing Day, and then it went away after that. And a few days later, a cough appeared. Then one week later, all three of those symptoms this past Sunday appeared again, and that's why I sound the way I do right now. Uh, that is no fun so for it was, vacation. It was, it was, you know, one symptom, then second, then oh, we're all going to come back together in one, two, three. <laughs> my my whole family was sick over the break too, including myself at times. But check this out, Shane. All three of us had to go to like, I guess what your equivalent of a clinic take a wild guess how much it costs to now we were diagnosed with bronchitis for me and my daughter and a sinus infection for my wife let's take a wild guess i have no idea 600 bucks dude well 600 bucks hopefully that's coming oh no 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 (laughs) not at all dude well i mean no i think it's covered like oh i think we have to pay like four but oh boy yeah, it's a dude for a cold, man. For a cold. <laughs> and apparently that's the way things work in the U.S., but you know that is not the topic of this week's podcast, even though we would like it, like, might like it to be so. Um, you know, this, we want to talk about RuneScape news, and you know, this week is a patch week, and, you know, I was subtly smiling when this happened because, as you could tell, it was a tough week as it was to produce the show, but we are here nonetheless, and I think we're going to start off, and it would make sense to, of course, start off with the biggest the biggest item, of course, and that is the treasure hunter key exploit that happened on New Year's Day, and this resulted in a news post being posted about a week later because, you know, there's just this propensity of the RuneScape player base to assume that if something is in-game, no matter how it seems, it is fair game to play and exploit. But that is not the case, and we'll get around to that in just a bit. But what exactly happened was on January 1st, we were having the Firework Festival Treasure Hunter promotion, and there was a bug that allowed some players to re-roll prizes indefinitely. It was affected, uh, the players affected were those who had not participated in the previous version of the promotion that ran in January of 2018. So if you didn't open Treasure Hunter, you were away for some time, you would have had this bug. And as soon as they were aware of this, they investigated and produced a hot fix, and it was fixed within a matter of hours. And they said, you know, some players chose to abuse the bug to generate large amounts of wealth, in particular, you know, re-rolling the... 
items on Treasure Hunter that show for, I think some of them were all the way up to six or eight times on the promotion thing. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I got some nice bonus XP out of that. But what happened with this, they say upon investigation, they discovered there was an increased injection of GP into the game during the period that the bug was live, which was about double seen on a typical day. And this is not a significant amount in terms of the overall game economy and bond prices and exchange trade prices were not adversely affected. They're going to continue to monitor and take additional further actions if necessary. And as of the time of writing this post on January the 7th, 15 accounts were permanently banned and 300 others were temporarily banned while the investigation was going on and they were determining whether or not they should take additional steps to remove items, XP, or GP gained with this bug. All right. You know, there's a, there's a fairly simple mantra that we have with bugs in RuneScape. And this is something that, you know, I think everybody should be aware of if you're a good citizen of the game that you play. Is that if you find a bug or you find something that definitely is not documented, because it is not documented and it doesn't make sense, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you should have infinite rerolls on one of these promotions. Well, how would you, how were, would you know that? When, when, in, when in the past... Were we allowed to have infinite rerolls on something on Treasure Hunter for free? Shane, the promotions change all the time. I mean, do you sit there and read the directions and instructions on every single? But does it promotion? make sense like, to have? Do does it make sense to have infinite rerolls? It's not our job to make for it to make sense. Like, why is that? Why is that our job? I mean, that's not our job. It should be common sense to know if something smells icky. No, see, I think it, when something smells icky, see, I, I, I think we have to acknowledge that this is a different kind of bug. This is a different kind of bug abuse. It's a different kind of exploit. This isn't going down at a boss, going through a certain sequence of, of things and getting a guaranteed drop or, or whatever PVM guys do. I mean, it, it's not that kind of an exploit. This is an exploit that you paid for it. You paid money for it. So I feel like that puts it in a little bit different of a category. Because, I mean, I don't know what kind of stories you got up there in Canada, like Tim Hortons or something, right? Something, something like that. Is that a thing? Yeah. That's what came to my mind. Okay. What are they? Like food or something? Yeah, like Tim a Hortons a is, McDonald's? is right. yeah, like a McDonald's. So you, so you go in there, you get... You only had to pay a dollar for your like, cheeseburger. You're like, well, that's, that's messed up, but sweet. I'm going to take it. Or are you going to give them the other couple bucks? Or are you going to walk out? Better yet, are you going to be banned from Tim Hortons forever? Forever. Because you took what they gave you. But it's entirely different. No. Because <laughs> it, it is entirely different. <laughs> Because they pay you money. are making an active decision to engage or whatnot. And you're making an active decision when you walk out. You're walking out the door, you're eating your cheeseburger. Right. But the difference is, and what I'm trying to orchestrate here is that when you have a situation where you have something that is quite clearly an infinite reroll. Versus getting a couple dollars off of a cheeseburger. There's no terms of service that you agree to when you walk into a McDonald's, aside from don't rob the place. <laughs> and what that effectively means when you boil it down to it is that they want you to come in. They want you to be civil. They want you to hopefully buy something and not take too long when you're there. And, you know. People have made mistakes with change before. You hand change out, and you know I've seen this in places before. They have gone to the point where they have automatic change distributors, so that the only way a mistake would be made is if it was keyed in wrong in the system, which is what this is. But the very key difference in this is that there is a conscious choice made with the Treasure Hunter Fireworks Festival to re-roll 
that you don't have with a cheeseburger when it's off price. But, you don't have the choice to say, I want it at this price or I want it at you know the two ninety nine price if you get it for a dollar instead. Because it's what comes up on the screen on the terminal when the person keys it in. Even if you see that, you, you're still going to go out there and you're going to calculate your state tax and your federal tax and throw that in too? I suppose you could, but how are you supposed to know what is a mechanic and what isn't? It says on the Treasure Hunter info pane, whenever you open up Treasure Hunter only- for one of these weeks, it shows exactly how these problems work. But this affected people that didn't do it before. So they hadn't seen it before. This is completely new. Like I said, you've got all these instructions that most people don't. Come on. People don't pay attention. Just like they click agree. They don't read no terms of service either. And and the next thing that I want to go into with this is that there could very well be people who did it by accident. And that's why we have this number down below. 15 accounts have been permanently banned and 300 others have been temporarily banned. And what my theory is about what's actually happening with this is that the 15 who have been permanently banned as of the writing of this post were the ones that you could see who have done it multiple times and effectively made a killing off of it and were doing it in a weaponized way. Whereas, you know, you might have had other people who just walked in on it and said, oh, let's but, see, what's I mean, this? It... That would be the one who would be temporarily banned. Someone who might but, have I mean, is it weaponized it though? Like, wouldn't you just think you had a good deal? No. Like, wouldn't you think you, – you'd be like, holy crap, that's a, that's a good deal. No. Like, that's, a, that's a good promotion right now. No, because like it doesn't in, make in, sense in any another world. 20? It doesn't make sense in any world that you would get infinite rerolls on anything Treasure Hunter related because that's just not how things work. Because well, in what world – But they change in what world do you pay a few, In what world do you pay a few bucks for keys and expect to get something infinite out of it? You know what this when was? When has that ever happened? This was RNG coming home to roost. This you you you. you I think. Look, I knew you were the. You would probably think that it doesn't matter if it's wrong. It's wrong. There's no difference between this and any other glitch or bug or whatever. But I think this is in a completely different category because people spent money on it so if they wanted to re-roll or not re-roll if they wanted to roll this back like if they were to take all the items the gp the experience okay that's appropriate that's appropriate sure i don't think you should be banning people um for this one because it's it's i just don't think it's the same thing um and, and and think about this, Al. This is going to – I mean, what are they going to do when they come out with a new promotion? They really hyping this promotion up. They really want people to buy into it. I'm not buying into shit, dude. I am not buying into nothing until 24 hours after. I'm serious because I'm not going to get caught. What's your choice? I'm not going to get – I'm not going to get – but choice. there's going to be a lot of people making that choice because if you're going to – you ban 300 people, man. Uh, isn't that contrary? Is that contradictory to what you're temporarily what you want to, uh, uh, right? But isn't that contradictory to what you're wanting to do by what they promotion <laughs> with getting people in it and fired up about well, it and on it and buying into it? I have but a perfectly good response that that shuts this all up and nips it in the bud. You know what it is? What's These that? fifteen people out there who have been permanently banned and anyone else who have been permanently banned for this ask for a refund. If they don't give a refund, ask your credit card company to issue a refund. And if that doesn't work, get a lawyer. You can't get a lawyer, dude. What you, you know how much a lawyer costs for like – what? even if you dropped 100 and bucks and that's, on promotion, and that's, and, it's not – And that's the point with working. this. If someone is this concerned about this, that they really want to take this up with Jagex to that point, get a lawyer. The, if you're that concerned about it. If no. this money that you put in and getting banned is that important to you that you feel you did something that was entirely within your own right and Jagex won't refund you, your credit card company won't refund you. And I should say that I'm not just one of those people who 
jumps on the bandwagon and says, sue everything if they look at you the wrong way. Oh. I'm just saying that if you follow the path of ex- escalation and it doesn't work, that's what you do. Because there is, in what I can see with this, is that this would potentially be a shady business practice because you paid for a service and that service was not rendered. Uh huh. Right. So. But I'm saying it comes down to the responsibility of these people to know that if that, you are but... actively. I'm talking to the 15 who were actively banned okay. with this. I'm not talking to the 300 who were banned temporarily, who might have done it accidentally. I'm talking specifically about people who did this with the sole purpose of exploiting it. Those people knew what they were doing, and there is a history within RuneScape of Jagex coming down on people harder yes. who know what they're doing and officially exploiting something to make gain out of it. One of the other times this uh, happened I mean, was the 2018 Halloween event. You know, we could go back further um, in various histories to, you know, party hat duplication, that kind of thing. Right. Um, the Tears of Guthix bug when people were suddenly dying out there and they were luring people to get uh, or to put their party hats on. Um, oh, yeah. And There's drop their been, items. There was the construction Falador Massacre, which yeah, I think is the I best mean, chronicle with this one here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we gave Jagex a lot of um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Not slack. Uh, the opposite of slack. Um, for effectively glorifying the guy who did that at that point. And I see this no different than that. Yeah. Well, no, I, 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 I can tell. And um, – I mean, I think that's fair. That's, I mean, that's a fair position to take. But if you notice, like, those are all very different, very glaring. Yeah, of course, you, the big you know difference that is you that know, you didn't pay you for know, it. Like, you have to go through effort to cheat. Right, and <laughs> you have to do this with this too. Right. Mm, I don't, but it's, I don't know, man. I mean, if something's going to let you re-roll, aren't you going to re-roll? Like that doesn't. That's not the same thing. It's going out of your way. Here's an example. Here's here's a here's an example, Shane. No one got banned over four tick auto attacking, right? Is it a bug? Well, yeah, it was a bug. But no, we'll make it a feature now. Yeah. And and you so, see, I mean, and see this it, is the this is the different yeah. that that is definitely a difference because you know if they would have come down on that in the very beginning we would have seen an entirely different response uh, from the combat community and you know four tick auto attacking would have ceased to have existed at that point in time and you know I think we have said on the podcast before that they should have treated that as a bug and I still stand by that. No, I I. I mean, I agree with that. The one thing that I was really, really concerned about going into um, this discussion was I wanted to make sure that this wasn't being treated differently than past bug abuse issues because, because let's face it, this is screwing with their money. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Right. That's and bad. from, Anytime you screw and with from the perspective money, of the company, I see this is not – being treated that past bug abuses either, which, you right. know, if you're a skeptical of microtransactions, a skeptical person of microtransactions, you can point to this and say that, you know, the people who pay more don't have any more rights than you. Well, yeah. And for, um, and for all intents and purposes, I said that people could get a lawyer, but do I really think 15, one out of 15 people is going to do that? No, I'm just saying that if one of these people really wanted to make that big of an issue about it, they could. I'm not advocating that people do that. I am 100% on the side of banning these people who did this knowingly. And I will say that if, for example, you are away or one of our listeners was away or anybody who is within reach of this podcast and you were away last year and you came into this and you – you know, seemingly had infinite rerolls. If you tried to disseminate the idea that you could get infinite rerolls to your friends or talk about it and encourage others to do it, or you did it, 
you know, numerous, numerous, numerous times upon discovering it, I would say that you should be banned permanently. But if you just did it, you know, once and you realized that, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done this, maybe this was a bug, then you would fall into the temporary ban category and hopefully have that be unbanned. I, w- I mean, I would hope so. Like, like I said, I, I think that it's one thing to roll the stuff back and, and that's fine. I, I, I think that's a much more appropriate. And although I do agree with you on what I would consider like explicit bug abuse, I don't, I don't know if this, this is the same thing. It just, it feels different to me. Um, and I mean, look, this is a legitimate argue, arguing point. I just want to say it because it's kind of funny. Like, think of all all of the dollars that <laughs> were spent in the hopes of getting something good. Yep. For 10 hours, people got something good. Yep. Guaranteed. And you know what? This, this won't happen once we go through the changes that we've been calling for and Jagex has been talking about over probably the next year, this will be a thing in the past. And I think that's the bright side, right? That's yeah. the, yeah. you know, the silver lining, I guess. Yeah. And, and, you know, I would, I would go as so far as to say that I don't even know what the, um, uh, terms of service are for, banning or rather refunds on treasure hunter in terms of this uh, probably not that much since it's really hard to roll back one specific account but i think that you know if one of these 300 people who was temporarily banned and did this accidentally sent in a ticket to jagex about this had xp or gp or some items removed from this i think that person should be entitled to a refund on this because you know it was a bug and it didn't work as intended and we're going to have the logs of who they pulled people off of and you know this is something i'd like to hear about um you know this is a very small pool 15 people permanently banned 300 temporarily banned in a game with you know tens of thousands active at the same time this is a very small pool and it's very hard to actually probably find one of these people so there's no way of knowing uh what the course of action is going to be on them but um my guess is uh several accounts owned by the same person out of that 15 yeah that would probably make sense that would make sense that would make sense yeah no that that would make sense but the reason i i mentioned rolling that stuff back is because jagex has said that that they were they're taking the games they're taking the money they're taking the gp the xp back so i mean i i think that is probably the best that would have been the best thing they could have done yeah Just, and you know. you know as i said there there's a past history of the company coming down hard on people who knowingly exploit bugs versus people who are victims of doing it once and maybe twice and then reporting it or failing to report it. So um, we have that to go on. But there's also, you know, the, the rule knowingly exploiting a bug. Players must not use or attempt to use any cheats or errors that they may find in our software. Any exploits a player finds must be immediately reported to Jagex through customer support. And, you know, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, this is the reason we are talking about this. Right. But if you if you skipped through those little tutorial things, like I mean, I've I've never read one. To tell you the truth, like I just click until yeah, I get know. something. You wouldn't know, man. Right. And it just seems awfully harsh in the, in that sense. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm all for you know permanent bans on serious bug abuse. Yes, I just I just feel like this is a, a different set of circumstances that maybe um i don't know i mean i wouldn't want to be in their shoes because uh i guess they uh, for them they probably feel like it's a slippery slope yeah um you can't give an inch but i think this is a time when you, you could take in all of the circumstances and say 
okay. Well, are you saying nobody well, should be bad for this, or what exactly are you saying with that? Yeah, I don't think there should be bans um, out of this one. I think it should it should roll the stuff back. Um, and I honestly, I don't think it had any effect on the economy whatsoever. I don't even think they needed to tell people that um, at all, to tell you the truth, because I, this wasn't well known. Um, oh, it wasn't? I mean, I haven't been plugged into the RS community over the break, so I have no idea. No, I didn't hear a okay. single word about this until the news post and that's like that's kind of weird usually you hear about a a bug of this you know i mean yeah you you heard about it but i I never heard a thing about it and i didn't even hear anything from like people that normally play promos about like an op promo or anything so uh yeah that's why i'm like well how do you know what's a mechanic and what's not how do you know what's meant and what isn't like yeah, and, and you know, I, I think the reason and I think the biggest flaw with what you're saying about that there should have been just rollbacks and perhaps um, refunds on this and the biggest flaw with that comes down to the fact that it creates two sets of rules, one for people who pay extra and one for people who don't. And what is the number one criticism that we've been hearing forever with microtransactions, it's that, you know, hey, people who pay are higher class citizens in RuneScape. And had, well, had they done what you had been suggesting, they would have been just doubling down on that. And they would have had a bigger problem than had they just issued these bans, I think. Right, but that's more in the nature of what the bug is, right? I mean, I'm not sure that it really says that. Because the bugs that, that people exploit um, because they're not paying, because they're not treasure hunter bugs, I mean, you purposely really have to do that. I mean, I'm trying to think of um, best examples to Vortec, but there's other examples too. There was, remember, there was some, there was bugs of Vindicta, um, Vindicta, I think maybe even Hellware. Both of those had serious yeah. issues at yeah. one point. But you had to, like, purposely. Like, you knew what the mechanics were before, and you knew that there wasn't anything that had changed. So, that's why I'm saying, like, this is much murkier, because this changes all the time. You never know what the mechanics are. Most people don't read them. I don't think it makes it saying, like, you're a higher class of player. It just It's a hell of a lot easier to make a mistake, I feel. Yeah. Um, you know, just doing some, uh, quick looking on here. The reason they did respond to this is there was a post on the subreddit that garnered 813 votes, uh, about this. Oh, when did that drop? Was that like in the, that the was, uh, that the... was on January 3rd. On November 26th. So that's after it would have been fixed if it only lasted for 10 hours and it started on the first. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and, you know, it follows. So they were saying like they they had support to ban. So that's why they banned. Well, I I mean, the the post says um, Treasure Hunter Buck just tanked the economy, FYI. And this is something I think that you probably want to get ahead of. So my guess would be that this post came out because you had this post on the subreddit with 813 upvotes. See, that's and that that was what I thought they could have not even acknowledged at all okay. because I thought that was yeah. drawing attention to it. It, it, it was drawing the economy no, it all. Was, it was drawing attention to the yeah. fact that there was a major problem with Treasure Hunter, and yeah. it was just drawing more flack to Treasure Hunter, so they had to shut it down. But at the same time, when the post was made on the 3rd and the news post comes out on the 7th, you really have to question if four days is enough of a, is a, rapid, enough of a rapid response on that. Wow. Um, so that was that boat has sailed. It is well so, on to past the horizon and onto its. So the subreddit got panties in a bunch, which then got Jagex 
it 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 spurred their probably decision making process yeah quicker yeah um, where they were probably having some internal discussions about how best to handle this and then yeah. this happens and it forces their hand yep okay yeah well it makes a lot more I sense now, doesn't it yeah no it makes sense i don't i don't love it but um i guess yeah, we'll put and, that and in when, your, in your me, book right shade yeah and i mean when you look at the top <laughs> comments um 200 mil should never have been on treasure hunter the gp one um, um the second highest is that and this is going to surprise you the second highest is any account that's was abusing this should be punished. The big problem is that when bugs happen like this, there are no consequences. There's no punishment. So people do more of these if it happens again in the future. That's that the second. And would be re-rolling. That's what I'm a bitch. I'm telling you. People get real sanctimonious when they're behind the keyboard. Oh, yeah. boy. Do we know that? <laughs> yeah, oh, hey. Just, we even have yeah. posts on here from JD and Warden. Let's have a look at these here. Um we're investigating the impact of this activity at presence. This is JD talking. We will update when we have more information. Rest assured, if there's evidence that individuals have abused the bugs, then we will take action accordingly. Um, Mod Warden then comes in, says that uh, this is an unfortunate bug and bad timing for it to occur with it hitting right smack in the holiday season. I take responsibility for this. Our escalation process was used to get the issue hot fixed as quick as we could. I will reveal the process, review the process with the team, taking a look at our QA efforts prior and our resolution and find out what improvements we can make. Additionally, when things like this happen, I want to make sure we are careful with our remedy that we can identify the offenders as accurately as possible and apply consequences accordingly. Would hate well, for us to know. make this problem worse. Myself and the team will keep you posted on what we learn about this issue, the impact, and its remedy. Jeez, did we did we overlook a PR background on him too? Because that's probably about as good of a statement as you can put out. It's like, nope, buck stops with me. And well, I told you he was going to be like this. No, I know. Like that's 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 leadership. Like that's really that was a really good statement. Um. See, I, I, I went into this thinking one thing, and now I'm just going, well, this is just unfortunate all around. D- when in doubt, don't interact, I guess. I mean, yeah, that's, that feels bad. That's what I, that's, thing, that's, but that's, that's what I say. Like, I mean, that's all you can do, right? It's like if something feels fishy, just don't, I guess. And here's the thing. If you, if you can... If you can get you a bankroll, I'm telling you, I'm watching people do it every day. They're making 30, 40, 50 mil off a single weapon every day. Every day, Shane. Wow. You don't need to hit 200 mil in Treasure Hunter. You just need a five bill stack. That's all you need. And if you have that, you can make 100 mil a day, 50 mil a day. Boom. Every day. Every day. Fascinating. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think we uh, teed this one up and uh, offered our opinion, found out yeah, the I mean, reason why the post see, actually right? came out. And, you know, the post on its own on the RuneScape website says one thing. Mod Warden says something else entirely. The post should actually be reversed. What was said on uh. the official post – should be on Reddit and Mod Ward and should also be on the front page. I mean, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Yeah, totally agree. Are you going to? But here's the question, Shane. Are you, are you going to show the people on YouTube your new book? <laughs> we could definitely do that. Um, this was something that came up in producing this one, and you know, I, I don't think it's entirely true. But Tannis has come up with a book authored by myself called "Blame the Players" by Shade One Two Zero Eight Eight, already a New York Times bestseller, apparently. You know it. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's move on to the actual um, update of the week. So. Uh, the patch notes in particular, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I think we first ought to discuss uh, the changes that have happened in regards to the um, pet poll that we talked about prior to Christmas. And, you know, we really weren't 
that that enthused about these, were we? No. We got the winners no, now. Really. Yeah. So let's have a look at these. The area pet is Mune, the adaptive creature by Sweezy. Um, the highly adaptive creature that effectively changes based on its own area. Um, it kind of looks like a hybrid between a dragon, a horse, and a dog. It looks like a monstrosity. I mean, I don't know. Or a no, Pokemon, I, 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 maybe? I want to say that. I just don't... I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't... It'll be interesting with these to see how much creative license the actual artists take versus what the player concepts ca- said. Yeah, no, um... I do like how it, that, that it can change and that you have to, um get the different effects from the different areas, I guess. It's so it's almost like outfits like from the uh Mouseketeer thing. Yep. Um so that's cool. We we're seeing like mechanics get, you know, um that have been proven to, to people like uh, being incorporated with more stuff. That's cool. Um Yeah, but just full disclosure, I wasn't really into these pets no, that much. Same. Uh, the clue scroll winning pet was Artemis the Compass Deer by Wild Kidzuni. Um, the idea behind Help me this with one... that, Shane. Help me with this one. Okay. What? How does it represent clues? I don't do clues, right? And all that stuff. Well, How does this represent that? There's a compass clue scroll. You can get a compass. I believe it's in the elite ones. Um, you just teleport around and it points you in a general direction. And as you get close and the needle moves more. Okay. So there's that. There's also the fact that prior to the clue scroll update, when you could put them on your tool belt, uh, you needed the spade, the sextant, the watch, and the compass in order to do coordinate clues. And okay. the meerkats also work as a coordinate in that um, they're able to say what uh, coordinates you're at, and they can dig and find your treasure if you've got a coordinate clue. Yeah, there's so much more. I, I feel like there's they have more ties to clue scrolls, but. Yeah, you know, maybe it should, maybe, maybe it should have been a meerkat pet, right? It, I, I mean, I was like the second one, and, you know, it was the runner-up. But, yeah, no, I was just curious, because I know you do clues. I don't do them, so I'm I don't like, is there something clues, I'm missing to be here? Honest. Okay. Um, and just a, you know, a bit of a going back to when the uh, – when the clue scroll rework happened, they got a substantial buff to meerkats, and there's more reasons to use them now. Um, you can complete the clue scrolls without triggering an attack from all those mages that appear, so there are definitely reasons to use meerkats. Um, they inc- increase the radius of scan clues by five squares. They provide the sextant coordinates, so it's not like you need those anymore because you can get those from the clue, and they can dig. Previously, they only used to do the last two items on that list. So... Yeah. Um, following clue scroll rework, there are reasons to do that. Yeah. Moving on uh, from that, the money making pet that won was uh, Richie, uh, which is the fancy magpie by Kari Chibi, which is a magpie, which of course goes to the idea that we have magpie familiar in game that steals gold items and effectively just provide a bit of an injection of wealth into people. So yeah. I think this one makes sense, and it's I mean, going to be a lot yeah. more detailed than the um, than the magpie summoning familiar. You know, the best part of this is the monocle. That's, that's the monocle and the hat are just like. Well, I mean, I mean we already got the top hat. Small. It'd be interesting to know if we could have a monocle uh, for our player base. That you'd be, you know, ninety percent <laughs> of the way there to having that, right? That'd be so cool. Yeah. Let's see, monocle. There's something called the Craftsman Monocle, though it doesn't look that good. came out back in 2010. Huh. Uh, the Darren Lightfinger Mini Quest. Okay. Next pet is the um, RuneScore pet, which is Zez which, by Baby Steps. And, of course, Zez after Zezima. Makes sense, right? Um, changes its appearance every 5,000 Rune score. It starts off I, with basic rune and then moves from trim to guthics to zamorak to ceridome and to gold. Yeah, see, now I love, um, I love the ideas behind this 
but I thought it looked very similar to like the the little bobblehead mini knights that we got right. during that um Sliske's one. Uh, there's the Sliske bobblehead too. Yeah, I, so like I'm hoping that they fancy up the design a little bit with it. Yeah, and then because I, mean, this I is really just do concept like that, art, right? Yeah, and that's a great like. It's kind of a great it's like a way to show your rune score. You know, like once people know that okay, rune is five thousand or got the extreme is this, or you know, you can have that with you, and then and you automatically would know someone's. You know score. what they that's should do cool. for the twenty five k one? They should just make it the gilded rune armor. The pure yeah, gold. See, and, and I don't even remember most of that stuff. Like right, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I might strike every, some, I might be controversial with this, but I loved the old uh, the old style of the Sarah Domans, Amarac trim uh, rune armor because, I don't know, the modern one is kind of eh, I guess, compared to how the old one looks. I Maybe it's just nostalgic creeping in, but I prefer the way the old Sarah Doman and all those rune armors looked. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, if I wasn't a farmer, I'd probably wear the trimmed or something to that effect. Because back in the day, that was the armor that I would always aim for because it was so expensive back then. But now it's like... It was? Oh, yeah. Oh. This is, this is, this is all before me. Really? By the time I came around, that was just like junk. I mean, it wasn't, no one cared. Let's see. Gilded rune armor. Gilded armor. Um, yeah, you know, the gilded pl- rune plate body is 279k today. Yeah. Whereas if we look at the price of what it uh, used to be back in the day, uh, well, it did spike up to around, you know, 3 mil, 3.5, 3.5 mil back then. But, I mean, Back then, this was expensive when it first came out before the Grand Exchange. So that's, oh, yeah, I mean, that's the era I, I'm going back to with this. Yeah. See, and so it, when I started, I mean, you were pimping if you had some, like, dragon full ornament. Or dragon chain, because we didn't yeah, have dragon plates I mean, until much later. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, you're baller. But we'll, baller save the, we'll save the reminiscing <laughs> part until the live stream, yeah. I think. Right. Um, all right. Uh, one final note with this week's uh, update. The January Solomon's uh, General Store Sale is happening for the entire month. This is, this is a big one. You get 50 to 75% off uh, most things, including the legendary Gorilla Pet, the Pegasus Teleport, and Bank Boosters, amongst other things. So if you want to expand your bank space, now is a good time. And I'm actually going to have a look here and see what the... Uh, what is on sale in addition to that because you know those yeah. are the headliners but there's always going to be you, um more in there and oh oh yeah i'm sure there'll be some outfits and stuff too but yeah uh if you don't have a legendary now's the time because uh and, and some don't people get, on like, that will i enter my authenticator code because you have to enter your authenticator uh, code on, on the web well i'm just saying like the, the legendary pet it, it picks up so much stuff for you it's like it's invaluable for me and it don't get put off by the size of the gorilla because it doesn't have to be that size like you can once it's fully grown you can put knock it back to like adolescent or baby or whatever and it will still have all the functionality of um the full grown version like yeah. it'll still pick everything up for um, you so, and you don't have that big huge thing Following you. Regular nine ninety ring coins on sale for two hundred and forty seven. Yeah, that's really cheap. Like that's that's like super cheap. And everyone's favorite Shadow Drake is also on sale for three forty one. It's good they didn't mention the Shadow Drake in the post, right? <sighs> yeah, but I love my dragon. <laughs> I love my dragon. If you want the Christmas... I don't get it out anymore. I don't I don't I don't yeah. piss people off anymore, but I do love um, my dragon. If you want the Christmas themed one, Rory the Reindeer is on sale for four hundred eighty seven from nine seventy five. Um the Warren Behemoth is also on sale for two forty four from nine seventy five, so similar to the gorilla. And the Blaze Hound is also on sale as well for legendary. Yeah, I got the reindeer for my 
for my alt because I wear a sombrero in my construction cape. And it was the closest thing to a donkey I could find. <laughs> so I, I got the right deer. Now just imagine you go start harvesting farms. Hey. Yeah. And you move to Southern California. Could do that. Or I guess New Mexico, maybe. I don't know. Do they have farms there? Uh, what is the know. primary industry know. of New Mexico? We're getting off track. Anyways. Yeah, ranching. Yeah, right. That makes sense. All righty. Moving on into the patch notes. Uh, first patch notes of the year. And uh, these ones are hot fixes for Yak Track because they were fixed during the event. But during the event, uh, an issue causing ore boxes not to count towards Yak Track smithing tasks was fixed. Upgraded items now count towards Yak Track progress. Toad Flax has been added to the Yak Track task list and Ranner was removed. And Prayer Yak Track and Free to Play now allows Dragon Bones to count towards the task. Oh, wait a minute. I just got Premiere. I'll have the Yak Track now, won't I? It's gone. Oh. Well, then what is all the patch? Like they were they were uh hot fixes that were fixed during the event. Yak track ended on the on the 6th. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I I literally was a day late and a dollar short. Literally a day wow. late. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, um but hey, I mean the, I'll get it next time it comes yeah, out. Yeah, the plan is there's going to be four of them in 2020, so you'll be able to take advantage of those. But, you know, I spent the better part of December working on Yak Track, and quite honestly, I didn't mind it. Um, it, it was a really interesting experience because um, in November we got the – or was it October? I don't know. Late October, early November, we got the pre-release for the ranch out of time eggs. So after that, I was just constantly hunting, trying to get the dra- or the dinosaur eggs, right? <laughs> so it's really been since late October, early November, since I haven't had a core task to do that was update related. So it was just this past week after Yak Track finished that I went back to um, – wood cutting and you know herb farming and the like and i completed all 50 uh yak track tasks i used my two skips that i was granted and i purchased four additional skips with a bond and that was enough to get through it so i did 46 of the 50 tasks oh wow nice yeah Uh, people seem to really like it yeah Um, it was it was really fun my one complaint aside from you know the grindy nature that we've already talked about is I'd like to see a place where in the uh, appearances menu where you can filter by Premier Pass. So you can see all the cosmetics oh, that, that we got. Be nice, yeah. Because I saw them as I was going, but I have no idea what exactly we got and what's in there that was from Yak Track. I mean, I can go to the wiki yeah. to do it, but it would be nice to have that in game. Yeah, and just have a filter there. Yeah. All right. Um, some more farming and herb lore changes. Farming requests requiring animals with the big bone trait will now correctly accept those animals. And also on the farming requests, since we're mentioning this, one of the medium tasks the other day I had a livid plant on offer. <gasps> so as we uh, theorized when it was initially released, they were going to... Um, pull on that inventory from the trader the this the but here's the thing the cost for this one to do was 11 curry seeds 10 tomatoes and you ready for this one a viridian chinchampa a crystal chinchampa and a cobalt chinchampa can you buy all those oh yeah you can buy all those Uh, i wouldn't care at all anything is better than so does everyone get that like is that, yeah, yeah. They're all the all oh, the tasks are the same per person per day. Oh, when that the next time that happens, Shane, it's a plant. You got to tell me, shoot me a message. Okay. Well, Anything well. to stay out of that livid, I will. I will do. All right. <laughs> um, animals whose shiny variants are subspecies in their own right, like an Araxi spider or a royal dragon, could not be handed in for farming requests. So. If you had a dragon and you want to hand a royal one in, you couldn't. So now Mm. night spiders and black dragons are requested in their place, which makes sense. Yeah. 
players can no longer boost their Herbalore levels to access the leveling benefits of Power Burst, Bombs, or Primal Pulp. However, you still can boost your levels to create the original potion. Which makes sense. Well, what's the point? I don't know. And I mean, I guess you might just want to do it, right? I, I guess. <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, primal Fruit will now prioritize the initial fruit crushed when making Primal Pulp. Uh, players can no longer see other players inside pens on Anachronia, on the Anachronia dinosaur farm. That's a bit weird that that was uh, yeah. set like that, but makes sense. Uh, the experience awarded for creating over Elder Overload cells has been adjusted slightly so that either method of making them will award the same XP regardless of which path was chosen. Of course, what this means is first you can make the Elder Overload cell, then you can add the other stuff to it, or you can make the Super cell and then add the elder ingredients to it first depending on which way you want to go okay master farmer and patch bomb issues have now been fixed i don't know what the issues are would have been good to get some more clarification on that uh one mobile fix i want to talk about compared to the rest of them here made minor performance improvements and uh, the game world is now not rendered when the full screen main menu is open on mobile now, just some general fixes as we move on uh, to the end here. Uh, ground wyvern bones can be stored inside a beast of burden. They made it so you could grind those up uh, not too long ago. Mining with porters or stone spirits will now correctly count towards the mining daily challenge. However, this will only count as one towards the progress of the challenge. Now, this is something I think that we need to clarify and needs to be adjusted for next time uh, we do a yak track type of event. Um, stone spirits count counted for yak track for mining ones. Really? Yeah. And huh. at the same time, on the other hand, uh, the dwarven tools didn't count for double. So I think there should be some parity here with the daily challenges and premier pass that if the stone spirits are going to work for premier pass, then they should work for the daily challenges. Or if they're not going to work for daily challenges, then they shouldn't work for premier pass. But not, nonetheless, I think they should be um, paired up. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. I think when you get to the, when, yeah, when you get to the door of tools, though, that's a bit more of a gray area since they're a treasure hunter reward. So I can see why they, maybe they didn't want um, double or and wood counting for that, but Hey, You know, um, one interesting thing with this is that, um, and I think you pointed me to this, is that for the mining and the woodcutting and the fishing yak track mm -hmm. tasks, uh, divination locations. Like the divine Oh, they're locations. all around. Yeah, they're yeah. all around um, those spots. Yeah. yeah, the divine locations, perfect for nailing out those woodcutting and fishing and mining ones, so... Using ex an explosive potion on a burning barricade in Castle Wars will no longer crash the game client. <laughs> I mean, okay. Absorbing memories into empty divine charges via the divine omatic now counts toward the daily challenges for divination, and this also worked well for uh, Premier Pass. Having a divination cash boost active and depositing all memories in your inventory will now uh, count all deposited memories towards a divination daily challenge. And you see here, we're seeing the patch notes uh, for the daily challenges because that was one of the last updates of 2019. Now, here's one that goes back uh, almost a decade. The Birthorp and Taverly Slayer Master has apparently been missing from the Slayer skill guide for at least seven years. They're back now. What? <laughs> Really? I guess we just knew. Yeah. I mean, I've I've brought an alt up within that time. Right. I guess I just knew. But what high level player goes there now that you can cancel tasks with Slayer points? Oh, that's true too. So. Hmm. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, -huh. uh, and completing the Sliske's end game replay no longer awards treasure hunter keys for the. 13 people that did it. It was it was a really low number like that. It was something in the less than 100s who did it. 
Um, it might have been, you know, even less than 20. And, you know, thinking about it, I knew at least seven of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I forget who it was. Someone in Clan Quest replayed that entire quest with the maze. Uh, I don't know. No. Exactly. <laughs> I'm picturing that. Not mm, 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 mm. gargoyles now count toward demon cluster tasks from um, the Anachronia woman, who whose name I'm forgetting now. So gargoyles are demons, huh? Apparently, uh, players okay. are now able to collect red mist from multiple mist clouds in New Varrock if the player defeats multiple armored zombies at the same time. Players can no longer receive spirit shards when they have a f- already have a full stack in their inventory and corrected some task-specific loot script that didn't always check against all NPCs' slayer categories. So Revenant, Dark Beast counts as a Revenant and a Ghost and, an, a, ghost and a Dark Beast for this purpose. That's oh, okay. interesting, isn't it's it? both, yeah. That's interesting. Y- you know, if you got to kill ghosts, you could go kill Revenants. Yeah, it is. I wonder but... if that's one of the um, Anachronia cluster tasks. No, the rep. Oh, ghost? Maybe. I was going to say otherwise, you get the revenants from the um, Wildy guy, right? Yeah. More. Right, right. More. Uh, um... You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I can't remember his name. Martin? I've got such goofy names. I don't know. I don't know. The guy who has all the bounty hunter rewards. Yeah. Um,. Cluster assignments from Lanakea is her name. Are creatures of Damonheim, uh, Krez creations, demons, dinosaurs, dragons, as well as strike worms and vile blooms. So um, you would have to get ghosts from someone else. Alrighty, folks. There's your patch notes for 2019, or first patch notes of 2020, rather. Yeah, 2020, Shane. We're gonna have 2020 vision this year. Hindsight's twenty twenty. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if only we would have checked the Reddit post first. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know what we need Blame to start? Reddit. <laughs> that's your that's your follow up book, Shane. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's the sequel. <laughs> All right. We did have a live stream this week, of course, celebrating 19 years of RuneScape, um, an anniversary. And, you know, I think the 20-year one's going to be special next year, especially with some of the things that are uh, on the docket for what we got. So you watch this live stream. So what was the main thing that we should have uh, taken away Um, from this year? So, of course, they uh, talked about the news post about the uh, Treasure Hunter bug, but we pretty much covered all of that um, in detail. Uh, and they also talked about the uh, activity pets and sh- or air. Is it area pets? Area, uh, I think. Area pets. So they showed um, they showed all those. Uh, went or no, that. just pets because there's area money making, clue scroll, uh, okay. and uh, yeah. root scrawler. So they went, they went through all that um, and they all had their little like birthday party hats on and um, I think it was Mod Mark, Mod Raven, Mod JD was um, doing a live stream, Mod Ian, and Mod Osborne. And so they were all long term. Heavy hitters in there with that. Yeah, they were all pe- there. They were all there for like a long time. So that was the that was the deal on that. Um, and they did some, they did, I mean, this was just for fun, right? There was no like hard hitting news and stuff like that. Well, of it's course, it's the first update of the, of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, but there was some cool stuff. Like, uh, one of the, one of the things they did was they played this game about what was older versus younger. Than oh Redscape. God. And this was kind of, kind of neat. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh what do you think's older shane youtube or rs rs totally yeah rs is also 
older than um, Fellowship of the Rings. Can you believe that? Yeah. Like, doesn't that seem like forever ago? RuneScape's older. RuneScape is also older, get this, than Wikipedia. Nuts. Only by 11 days, but still, that counts. Yeah. And, you know, this, yeah. this is something we were uh, in one of our group chats uh, with that uh, Earth who was on our uh, year in review show. You know, he was like, holy crap, you know, um, we're older than Google. <laughs> but we also know that, geez, there's people who are, you know, 18 or 19 and RuneScape's older than them. Yeah. Yeah. There is just a just a few things that they mentioned that are actually older than RuneScape, but they're literally like days or months older than RuneScape. So like um uh the Nokia, remember the brick Nokia yeah. phone, the yeah. thirty something. So that's a little bit older. Um the Sims is actually older than RuneScape, but only by a little. And uh I think the other one they said was Brad Brad and Angelina, but they're not married anymore, so that doesn't even count, right? No. No, those nah, Hollywood types, so. you know, marry and divorce, it seems like every other week. But they were really in love, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't I don't follow any of that Hollywood bull crap. I don't either. So um Yeah, so but that's kinda like I thought that was really cool. Um, and that was uh, that was fun. And then they went into the uh, the question, the you know the QA uh, portion of the live stream. And these were these are kind of cool. Um, I picked out what I thought were some of the more interesting you know questions. And um, the first one that I thought was pretty interesting was they asked what their the first project they worked on, and uh, Mod Raven said his was the uh, Will of Cheese. So you can thank Mod Raven for all of those cheese wheels that you have, because um, he made them when he. That was the first thing he did when he started. Uh, Mod Mark said that after building his desk, <laughs> which I guess was the first thing they had yep. to do. Yep. Um, That's something Andrew he, uh, made them do. <laughs> <laughs> they said they had to uh, QA underground pass, so that would have been a baptism by fire, right? Like, yeah. Uh, um, and then Mod Osborne said his first his first thing was uh, to do a like, construction news post um, and to try to like do it sneakily where there were hints oh, without I saying it, kind of thing. Yeah. So that was his first um, first big update. Uh, and then the uh, next question that I, I really thought was interesting was they asked them um, which update was the most special to them. And uh, Mod Mark said Dungeon Hearing. Can you believe that? Uh. Like, yeah, I know. I know. But that that's what he said. It was most special to him was Dungeon Hearing. Oh, I could see uh, why. I mean, it broke the mold. It was Andrew Gower's last update that he worked on. Um, yeah. His first scale to 120. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, and I, I, he pretty much uh, listed those same those same reasons. Yeah. Um, and Mod Osborne, believe it or not, he he said that it was uh, the hunt for Red October. Uh, it's the first quest he worked on, and um, and we know what a you know lore quest writer kind of person Mod Osborne is so yeah I can that totally yeah. makes sense um and that was kind of a fun I was thinking about it, I was like oh, that was a fun quest that was that was a, yeah, penguins were so goofy um and then uh you're gonna like this one Shane Mod Raven said one that it's most special to him pieces of hate <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Yeah, because he Which was, he was like, pirate. Yeah, class, that so. was good. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, and he said they just had a lot of fun with the uh, dialogue and the the writing of it and the puns and all that. And like, see, yeah, you get an entirely a different uh, perspective when you take it to different people because you'll, you know. Recall that we also did a decade in review podcast, which is uh, was our monthly bid for January, and with that. 
Um, you know, we've talked about everything from 2010 and on, but we didn't mention any of these updates. Everything that we talked about, uh, some of these did, of course, predate that. But, um, you know, very interesting, nonetheless, to see the different perspectives on how uh, the past history of RuneScape went. And, you know, maybe in retrospect with this, and, you know, this is one thing I thought that we could have done for that monthly bit was do a 19 year runescape special but you know i thought we're gonna need a special for next january so we're gonna next january month, monthly bit is already planned oh yeah 20 years of runescape right i mean exactly yeah dude. yeah oh here this the this one's good man this one's real good so i i i'm actually proud of jd for asking me. um he asked him what their uh, what update they regretted the most. Uh huh. Uh huh. So Madi and said um, the observatory quest. Um, I can see that. Uh, yeah. Um, and then Mod Osborne said the 2016 Rune Fest um, because he had just like been promoted and he was really on fire and he was all excited and said a bunch of stuff that didn't all come to be, but I gave the man a pass on that because you know what? 2016 was just a bad year all around. They got Brexit. We got Trump. <laughs> he got the rune fest. I mean, it was not a good year, you know? <laughs> um, this one's going to floor you, dude. This one shocked me. Mod Raven said the creation of the six stage. What he most regretted. Wow. Wow. Well, it did kind of kneecap them in terms of um, narrative because what happened effectively with that, I feel, is that we went from an era where, you know, quests could be ad hoc to one where we have these storylines that you need to complete and we are locked into this um, thing where, you know, you need to have one of these quests every few months or you forget what happened with them. And there's this constant drive to just keep doing bigger and bigger things with that. And that was the whole hype up of the sixth age, combining that with the player's decision to be made. And, you know, we, we talked about this, I think, yeah. on um, on the Decade in Review, at least I alluded to it, is that should, you know, the sixth age, should we have, you know, gone down this path? And should the decisions to kill Gothics and whatnot have actually been made? So... I mean, well, it's, 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 is... it's, it's in, if it's in the mind of us, it's obviously in the minds of Raven. So, yeah, I don't know what well, to and, say to that. I mean, what he the one thing that he really pointed out was it it caused confusion, and that's what he right. really didn't like about it um, was that there was just so much confusion. Well, between... yeah, and I mean, still today you play a fifth age quest, you get <laughs> yeah. a thing popping up saying this is the fifth age quest set in the past. It, yeah, um, so I mean, I can totally understand that. Uh, and this one really wasn't any surprise, I guess, to me, but Mod Mark said um, it was the removal of free trade and yeah. the wildy. Now, not that he said they believed in what they did, but he didn't, believe, but he regretted the way in which it was done. Right. And he said um, EOC is exactly the same. He said he didn't regret. The changes, like he thinks, are right, but the way they did them um, is what he regrets the most. I'm like, and I mean, it really sounded like they learned like a lot from um, from the way that they did it, and the way that he was explaining it. So, I just thought that I thought those were really uh, pretty interesting. And questions, you know, that you explains know? so much. That explains why it took so long to have them get back to a point where they can produce content on their own and they don't feel the need to vet it through polls as we saw in you know um 14 and 15 or yep. sorry 13 and 14 and then 15 with players submitting content less in 2016 um and with that it wasn't you know we said until the tail end of uh 2018 and in or in, and into 2019 that we said okay they got their groove back they're on the upswing and they're doing you know, what should have been done a long time ago, right? Yeah, well, and honestly, like, listening to this live stream, and, and like I said, I mean, there's, there was a little more. I just picked out what I thought were the most interesting and awesome, you know, questions. Um, but they did talk 
a lot um, a lot more about like why they came to those conclusions um, you know and like I, 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 it seems like what they're most guilty of is just not having enough foresight like the solutions they came up with were totally valid at the time they just had no way of under, of knowing what technology was going to be coming along later um so like for the wildy example uh they they had made all these like things all these untradeable things never thinking about the day that they had the technology to combat bots and the gold farming and all that um and then would roll that back and then now what do you do with all these items that were you know untradeable and all this so it's really a matter of like they just didn't you don't know what you don't know and they did the best thing like at the time but they wish they had done it differently yeah, and, and you know, I, I think we're, we're going to have to remember this live stream because this might be one of the most consequential live streams of 2020. Because um, I am planning on doing the year in review podcast again next year. Um, and with that, I hope everyone watches this one. Yeah, this one's fun. This is like, I mean, I never thought about it being so consequential or anything. I mean, I actually listened to this one twice. Um, but. It it was, I mean, it was a good live stream. I mean, I I I, I enjoyed it. Um, it definitely explained a lot of um, why decisions were what they were, um, and I, and I always I always enjoy that. Like I, that, I always like to to know as much as I possibly can because it it helps you to be able to like understand like oh I get it I might have made the same choice you know like and if you don't know the context. You could never really say that. Bingo. Um, yeah. So I mean, that was that was. I mean, that was primarily it. Like I said, there's 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 more questions than that, but um, I didn't want to retell the whole live stream because I figured people would want to listen to that on their own. And um, they they did finish it off with a quiz show and a special guest. So uh, Mod Shawnee came back um, and did the. Uh, the quiz show which was exceptionally hard like it was a lot of the like old stuff i did not do well on it at all how old um they had stuff going back to like 2003 four five like it was it was a lot of it felt like it was before my time um like they had one about um summoning and they and it turns out like it came in in 2007 but yep i was like for real because it mm-hmm. seemed like it was so much older than that because oh no i'm pretty sure i started in 2008 i'm pretty sure and it seemed like such a fixture when i when i started like it was i don't know i don't know it was it's neat though it was a fun little quiz um don't get excited much on was just i don't know i guess he didn't have anything else to do that day. <laughs> yeah, though no, he, he was he was fun though. They had, they said they had to bring back the king of birthdays for the birthday stream. Oh, okay, so, that of course makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So. All righty. Well, we're going to move on to our listener uh, question, which is from Sirion in just a moment. But I'll take a moment uh, for that to thank our Patreon supporters for the first time this year. This week, I'd like to thank Brock H, Cameron, Cass. Christian S, Darren L, Diana, Jason S, Joe M, Kyle, Rastafa, Ripeth, Sess W, The Naked Captain, Tom V, and Zez. Thank you all of you for your support to us. It definitely means the world to us. And as I mentioned and alluded to, if you are a Patreon supporter, you gain access to our monthly bits, which this month was our 
Decade in Review podcast that came out last week. So check that out on the Patreon feed at patreon.com slash rspmb. You gain access to that and the entire back catalog for as little as a dollar a month. And you, of course, also help fund the costs of hosting and production of RSPNB Update. At $3 a month, you'll get special um, a special VIP rank on Discord and a mention on the podcast at the start of the month, as well as access to high-quality stereo AAC versions of the show. And for $5 a month, you get a shout-out every week and gain exclusive access to the outtakes that we use for the clip show at the end of the year new year new clips on the way perfect time to uh sign up for that one and in case you're wondering what we're doing with this we got our monthly bit bonus show we got also a new thing we're going to be trialing this month in place of inside rsb and update we'll make the decision if it sticks around we're effectively going to do a variety show and this will come out after the round table the idea being is that the roundtable will be a forum to solicit ideas for this, and then we will produce a podcast talking about, you know, not, of course, only the news of the month. We'll make a quick, brief mention of any major news items of the month, but it'll, for all intents and purposes, be a variety show focusing in on things like rants. We used to do a rant segment, maybe some art, maybe some community creations, maybe some social media posts, including uh, people putting their foot in their mouth or saying good things on the RuneScape subreddit. So just a variety show of anything and everything RuneScape related. And of course... Debates. Yeah, yeah, we could put that in there too. See, and you've been talking to me for a while about doing something like that. And this then just clicked. Let's just do a variety show once a month, put anything that doesn't fit in the normal podcast in there, and call it that. And, of course, we also have the round table that will be hosted on the second Saturday of every month, though this is indeed the second Saturday of January (laughs) coming up. But we're not doing it this week because, as you can tell, I need to rest my voice. So the round table will be next weekend just to kind of ease us back into the uh, general stream of thing. And then, of course, should we ever reach that $99 a month here, we have movie night in the RSBNB Discord where, you know, we might throw some Star Trek Picard up. That's starting in two weeks. Oh, I'm, I can't wait, dude. I'm having an I'm having an overload of of nerd shows here lately, and I'm I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really I'm, really good. I say that as lovingly as I possibly can because you know I got to see Star Wars over over break and Mandalorian. And now we got Picard coming up. Yes, I'm excited. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And of course, all this and more can be found at patreon.com slash rsbnb. All right, so, you know, our producers also listen to the show, so that entitles them to put questions in. So Sirion put one in. You've been put in charge of designing the lineup of the 12 hero updates or headlining updates of 2020, one per month. How would it be distributed between update types? So PVM, skilling, quest, area reworks, remasters, I guess, um, anything that you want. So let's split this apart. Um, I'm going to kick us off. And I'm going to say that there should be one major PVM update every half year. So two of, two of them are going to be PVM for me. All right. Next, one remaster a quarter. So four remasters in total for the year. Okay. Okay. Then, um, so we're at... We're at um, there. I'm, I'm at six. Now, with this, I would do one area rework, probably Karamja. And, I mean, just look at what they did with Anachronia. Imagine that same kind of idea applied to um, Karamja. But at the same time, you could maybe tie that into uh, remaster, the remaster, right? too. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my counter at six just because I have something else I want to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because we were missing this, I'm also going to put four four headlining quests in there. Four, because we got we got three the quests last, time last we had year, four but quests. we had, really only had two headlining ones. So I'm going to go for four headlining quests. So with that, that puts me at ten, and then I don't know. 
I guess what we could do for the last two is let's just throw in um, maybe some new skilling content for crafting and fletching. Because I think we've been on the record as saying that um, those ones don't need remasters because the mechanics are fine. It's just mm-hmm. a question of, you know, making content useful. So they could effectively do what they wanted to do with smithing by just doing the high end with crafting and fletching, whereas they don't need to completely, you know, reinvent the wheel of how fletching works, right? So yeah, um, yeah. that's what I would do. Um, so that's two PVM updates, four remasters that might include area reworks, four quests, and two skilling updates. Very nice. Um, and, that up. and with this, I'd also like to throw in um, bottle quest. Should there be a delay, or you know, there's just a quiet week. Well, a week's fine, but I mean, if a bottle quest is the headlining update of the month, no, no, I'm, I'm not uh, saying a bottle quest should be the headlining update of the month. Oh yeah, yeah. Say, so, ugh, that's. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go with 12 skilling updates. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to, but no. Um, I actually think the most, uh, the the most fair thing, there's the socialist in me, but I'm thinking uh, four quests, four remasters, um, but I'm going to put skill reworks in those remasters. Um, Big tent there. Uh, so four quests, four remasters, four combat updates, and four skilling updates. And I feel like, or wait, that's sixteen. All right, oops, <laughs> <laughs> three, three a piece on each of those. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but those categories, three a piece. Um, I think I'd give a real nice kind of a uh, what? What's the uh, what's the phrase, Shane? Um, Gosh, what is the phrase from Mount Osborne? Um, the something of updates. The, the cadence of updates. Cadence of updates. There we go. That, that would make a good cadence of updates between all of the um, competing kind of sub-communities that enjoy all those things. Yeah, and, and I mean, nice. you, you got to also factor in that archaeology is going to be coming out too. Um, That's true. And, you know... I think our idea on this is that we're probably looking at March, maybe April on that. I don't think it'll be February. But yeah, March, but Sierron said we could. this is our world. Yeah. And we can make it however we want. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess a skilling update could count as archaeology, right? Exactly. It's a new skill. What's more of a skilling update than a new skill? Yeah. Uh, except you make those of us who, you know, run fan sites and websites, you know, scream when that happens. It's <laughs> the busiest time for us. And I am so glad that it didn't come out in uh, January because we're not ready for it. And the worst time was summoning when that came out in January. I believe it was right after the Christmas break. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know what will be interesting is to see how they uh, launch that, if they launch it with a quest or whatnot. Oh, I, would, I think it would be Wouldn't cool be with a quest, but I mean, it would. I want to say bottle quest with that, though. I don't, I don't want people to, I don't want it locked behind an epic style, long eye test of a quest type of deal. Just a quick little something, something, get you familiar with the you know, mechanics and stuff. You want to, you want to, you want a tip quest. on how to pass any, uh, eye test? What's that? Well, if, you know, when they show up the chart, all you got to do is they say, read, and they say, read the last line in the chart. You know what it, you say? Uh, made in China because most eye, eye charts <laughs> are indeed made in China. And that's what they say at the very bottom in the smallest print. <laughs> nice. <thing>. Nice. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I think that handles uh, Sirion's question and, uh, you know, answers uh, most of what uh, 
he would have said. So uh, I, I like mine and I like yours. So I, so I think that was good. Yeah. All right. Moving on to tech news. It wouldn't be a tech news without uh, without talking about Facebook, would it? First tech news of the year. Facebook. Of course it is. The headline here, <sighs> Enforcing Against Manipulated Media. So this is Facebook's uh, effort to be transparent to try and nothing can go wrong um, with this exactly uh, <laughs> prevent people from seeing fake news and fake videos and whatnot. So they're talking about what are effectively alterations made through simple technology like Photoshop or something that's going to be a lot more sophisticated called the deep fakes that we've been seeing where they take someone's face and they try and make it and present it as if they're actually um, showcasing what was going on. So this week they announced that they're going to be addressing both deep fakes and manipulated media with um, a variety of approaches with this. And the first thing that they wanted to say is that uh, they consulted with Um, 50 global experts in the technical, policy, media, legal, civic, and academic areas to inform the policy development. And, you know, the more and more we progress through this, it sounds like Facebook is a government in itself. As a result of these discussions, here's what they're going to be be doing. They will remove misleading media if it meets the following criteria. It has been edited or synthesized beyond adjustments for clarity or quality in ways that aren't apparent to an average person and would likely mislead someone into thinking that a subject of the video said words that they did not actually say. It is the product of an artificial intelligence or machine learning that merges or replaces or superimposes content onto a video, making it appear to be authentic. Now, you would think with this that, hey, parody, memes, and satire are dead, but they completely shoot this up in the air by saying this policy does not extend to parody or satire or video that has been – you ready for this one? Or video that has been edited to solely omit or change the order of the words. So if you put together a video – saying of the U.S. President Trump, and you wanted to make it say, oh, I don't know, I love Iran, we should nuke Iran, all in the same sentence, that would be allowed in this if you just edited various clips of the president saying that and put a video of him on top of it. Uh, that's because, I'm, I'm guessing that's because some of the, have you ever seen the music videos that they're, they'll take words from like, oh, Obama yes, or have. Trump and yeah. they... Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of those floating around around Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. Latest yeah. one I saw, I, I think they had him singing "Dance Monkey" or something. Uh, I, the one I saw was, um, um, I saw him singing "All I Want for Christmas Is You." <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. um, and consistent with existing p- policies. Audio, photos, or videos, whether deep fake or not, will be removed from Facebook if they violate any of the other community standards, which, of course, is nudity, graphic violence, or voter suppression, or hate speech. Videos that don't meet these standards for removal are still eligible for review by independent third-party fact-checkers, yada, 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 as we go on. That's been happening before. And this is, they say this is uh, critical to the strategy and one that they heard specifically from conversations with experts and that if they simply removed all manipulated videos flagged by fact checkers as false, the videos would still be available elsewhere on the internet or social media ecosystems. (laughs) And this is the most hilarious part of this one because if the deep fakes are posted on Facebook, they're going to be posted elsewhere on the internet Mm -hmm. too. So this is meaningless. It's exactly, the whole damn thing is meaningless. Exactly, exactly. And this, I'm going to go one show. step further. The entire Facebook and Twitter ecosystem for news is broken unless you're getting your news from first party sources. So, like, you're following a CNN or a Fox News, or you're following the journalists from CNN or Fox News. But when it comes to sharing news that's shared by, you know, your your Aunt Adele, it's not going to work. It's just broken. 
change on the outside, continuity on the inside. Yeah. That's what the elite's like. And, you know, it's, it's, wow. like, it's like we said. I, I forget when we said it. Um, we said this last year at some point in one of our Facebook stories. Facebook is acting like a government and, you know, they're driving people away. Well, yeah. I mean, can we – you think we could change the name to Boomer Book? Yeah, that's more appropriate, right? Right. They're probably like the only ones who still use it. They are. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Boomer Book. I think it's catchy. It describes Facebook perfectly, doesn't it? Like, it does. It does. <laughs> like how many of those petitions, like, if you don't agree to Facebook sh- sharing your data, copy and paste this. And all of the people over 40, you know, do it. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, just to see it, you're just like, oh, you got to be kidding You me. know, I feel like one thing we need... <laughs> In the new decades, is a social media renaissance. We need that, but we also need a social media education drive. Because people really believe the stuff that they see. And <laughs> it's just, that's bad. It's bad news. Yeah, I don't know. And I mean, it also goes up to the entire internet, too, because most of these ones who are posting fake videos... Um, do also have websites to correspond with them. Yeah, you know, I never in a million years thought that uh, my education on how to um, critique a source would be so yep. valuable. Yeah. But, like, I spent a, a good portion of, of college. I mean, that's what it is. You know, it's, it's being able to determine what is, um, you know, what's a proper source and what isn't right wow (laughs) who would have thought and you know what the fun part about critiquing sources is is that if you want to use wikipedia to write a paper all you got to do is find an article that's cited and go back to the original source and then critique that source and follow the tree up till you get to the actual information oh yeah i saw one of my classmates got roasted in a political it was a political economy class and they cited wikipedia (laughs) They got roasted. It was so funny. It's like, yeah, you can do that, but you got to do it the way you just described it. (laughs) Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Anyways, um, but yeah, Facebook continuing on is normal. And I mean, I think if you're using Facebook at this point, you got to question if it's for legacy reasons or whatnot. But there, there we go. Okay, boomer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but talking about um, you know, brighter things, we always talk about Google Chrome being the default browser that everybody goes to. Um, you guys will remember Firefox from years ago. Um, you know, Firefox has effectively re- rebranded itself and um it's as fast if not faster than Chrome now in terms of starting up and actually running so people are always looking for reasons to use firefox and last year uh, in the summer chrome said they were going to do something called um, preventing fingerprinting of your web browser now i need to describe what this is before we get into the article so when you look at uh, what fingerprinting is everybody has a unique fingerprint and you can do that with a web browser and it does it based on your operating system based on what fonts you have installed, what information and telemetry the browser sends back. Um, If you're emitting a location beacon, if you allow notifications for the website and whatnot, what operating system you're running, what screen resolution you're running, um, what time zone you're in, and so much more. And you can effectively combine all of these things and build a fingerprint so that, you know, it would be pretty good to recognize saying, hey, this is Shane and he's browsing this website even if I'm not logged in as that user and my fingerprint was on the internet somewhere. So uh, do you have any questions with fingerprinting and what a fingerprint is for the web browser based on how I just described it? Yeah, no, I I don't have any questions about the fingerprinting. I think you uh, explained it pretty well. Okay. 
So Google said they were going to block this in Chrome back last summer. Uh, there's still no roadmap going into April as to when this will be emerging in one of the beta channels for Chrome. And Firefox has taken the proactive step of shipping Firefox 72 this week, and it includes fingerprint blocking by default. It also is going to prevent websites from showing you all of those notifications saying, hey, this website wants to display notification because every news site out there wants to send you notifications in this day and age. It will also support picture-in-picture video on macOS and Linux. So as a result of this, uh, Firefox has a privacy feature that is ahead of Google Chrome's. And I just wanted to take this as a moment to actually talk about Firefox because it's not something we talk about all that much anymore. And, you know, it's a good web browser out there that um, has the choice of, you know, adding in these extra little privacy uh, features along the way. So if this is something that you're very interested in doing, you can definitely uh, download Firefox and do this. And you'll just have that next level of privacy on your computer. So there's that. But there's also one more thing. Okay. Microsoft, or sorry, not Microsoft, Mozilla has also uh, tackled crypto mining back in Firefox 69 two months ago. How so how did they do that? You can go to websites and it will automatically take over your web browser page and use your CPU cycles to mine for cryptocurrency. Oh. Yeah. So. Oh. Firefox 69 did that, and Firefox, yeah, it will stop if you close the browser, but Firefox 69 did that a couple months ago, and now Firefox 72 blocks fingerprinting with this. So, in a way, Firefox is ahead of protecting the users more so than Chrome is on this, because you need to install an extension to prevent crypto mining on Chrome, and also prevent the fingerprinting on Chrome as well. So if you're very privacy-minded, Firefox is the one to be looking at today. And you can take it one step further and install something called the Brave web browser, which is a web browser based purely on privacy, so much so that it blocks all cookies and tracking proactively if you ask it to. You can even turn off all of those um, pesky social media notifications saying, hey, share this post on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and it'll keep track of doing that. And it just makes um, browsing a lot more faster. So uh, there's two very good options, either uh, Firefox or Brave, if you want to um, just take your privacy one step up about what Chrome currently offers. See, that makes sense to me, though, because this isn't aren't uh, Firefox is open source, right? Yeah, but Chrome is too. So, Oh, Chrome is too? Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I- Really? Yeah. Yeah, the core of the browser is open source. Google just – like you can get something called Chromium, and it's exactly Uh the same as the Chrome you get from Google, except it's open source. Google just puts a Google icon on their Chrome. I'll be damned. Okay, because I I thought maybe it was easier for an open source like Firefox because they don't don't have to worry about – Yeah, it's open source. You know, I mean Google selling ads on – I mean, I don't know. It, it seems like it would be dicier. No, that's another thing with Brave. It's got built-in ad blocking too. If you wanted that. Oh wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. You put, you, 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 so you can use that and a uh, a VPN, and you're like, you don't exist. Sh- Brave actually has sh- um, sh- has something close to a VPN built in. It's well, got, damn. It's got Tor <laughs> private tabs. Um, Tor stands really? for the onion router, which basically makes it so that your connection doesn't go straight to the source. It bounces it through a series of other routers on the internet, hence the onion, because it peels oh. off the different layers. So if you're coming from, say, Canada, connecting to a site in the U.S., it might bounce you first from Canada to the U.K. to France then to maybe somewhere in Central America and then finally back to the U.S. It's a bit slower, but the idea behind it is that they can't tell where you're coming from. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and that's built in uh, by default into Brave. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, I mean, 
Um, we focus on Chrome so much, but Firefox and Brave are just doing more for privacy by default than Google is with Chrome. So if you're having problems with Chrome, get Firefox. If you really want to amp up your privacy, get Brave, I'd say. And if fingerprint tracking is important to you, but you don't want to go all the way to Brave, Firefox is the option for that. And I, I just felt we needed to talk about this because um, Firefox was the web browser that got everyone off Internet Explorer. And with that, I thought, okay, let's have a look at what old Firefox is doing and see where we're at. So. Well, that makes sense. All right. This last story is for you. Okay. And that is that movies are quietly disappearing. Hello. Was, was that was that the Alexa? She's so, yeah, she's so helpful that she can't even be quiet for the whole podcast. Okay. And that's that movies are quietly disappearing off Disney Plus. Yeah, and dude, they took the home alone. Yep. They took the home alone. <laughs> In 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 Pirates of the Caribbean, like I'm seriously hope this is a tech issue. Like I hope it's a mess up because this was not supposed to happen. Like you were supposed to have it indefinitely. Like they were not supposed to. They don't have a huge library to begin no. with. You know, it's like oh god. It's also Doctor Doolittle and the Sandlot. Of yeah, name. yeah, the Sandlot, dude. I mean, the Sandlot, like. We're like the Sandlot of like gaming, you know. Like us, that's us. Like <laughs> I've never seen the movie. Oh, 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 geez, Shane, killing me, Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I imagine, and this is what Polygon says, is that it's legacy deals. Legacy deals with other streaming services. Oh. Because we have something here called Crave in Canada, which is effectively like a Hulu for Canada that's got lots of Canadian TV shows on it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And one of their deals encompasses the Home Alone movies. So you can stream the Home Alone mm -hmm. movies on Crave in Canada. And many people get Crave as part of their cable subscription. So I would say it's definitely um, the legacy deals with this. So. And, well, hopefully we won't have to do that going forward. They'll get, you know. Yeah, and you're gonna, I, I mean, it's a good, it's a good service. I, I don't want to give it up, but it's like you can't keep taking movies away. <laughs> like, like I'm so glad we watched them on the holidays. Like we literally watched Home Alone, Home Alone Two, like over vacation for with my daughter. I'm so glad we did because, yep, they're gone. Yeah, and I wonder where they would have went. Because I mean, are they on Netflix? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. Another one that is, of course, going to be disappearing is Black Panther is already slated to go back to Netflix in 2026. See, I couldn't even find that on Disney Plus. I found it on Netflix. That's so uh, weird. And I wondered that. Yeah, that was actually one that I was like, because I wanted to see that because you know I've been watching all the Marvel right. movies. I'll be damned. Okay. Yeah. So this is something, and you know, Disney, as we, as we said, the mouse controls everything, right? Dude, he does. So yeah. as, as a result of this, they might have went a bit too far and tried to bring their entire catalog in. But of course, you do have to honor the legacy uh, deals with this one. So everybody just yeah. keep your eyes open for this. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to other things and talk about our achievements. These ones go all the way back to December 18th of 2019. So I'm going to start wow. us off here, and I'm just going to keep going until my voice gives out, okay? Okay. So, and I want anybody to notice if there's any, see if you guys notice any difference in the way these are ordered. So I made a slight, subtle change that's going to help. So just pay attention for that. So starting off on January 8th, we have Doc Hawk with 99 Fire Making, Mythica UK with 99 Wood Cutting. On the 7th, we have Delta with 99 Fletching, Dragon Kith with 99 Mining, and Yitzi with 99 Smithing. Then on the 6th, we had Black Nexican with 99 Fire Making, 
Love Natural on the 5th with uh, 99 Fishing and Yitzi with 99 Mining. Then on January 3rd, we had R3PO with 99 Invention. On the 2nd, we had Snowjet with 99 Smithing. Then on the 1st, we had a huge collection. First was Alex Peaks with 99 Fire Making, Parnassius with 120 Smithing and 120 Mining, and Snowjet again on the 1st with 99 Mining. Now, continuing on, and I'll continue on until about Christmas with this, or I'll continue on until the 30th, rather, just to split it up half and half with you. Uh, Shamrock Sage with 99 Slayer. Silly Cat 98 with 99 Summoning. Laurasaurus with 99 Prayer. Xenon Ray with 120 Farming. X Sandy Claus X with 99 Woodcutting on the 30th, as well as 99 Hunter and 99 Fire Making. Okay, well, then we have uh, K-Mat May 22 yep. with 120 Invention on the 29th. We have Yitzi with 99 Summoning on December 29th. We have Derp, Derper Nee with 120 Farming on the 28th. Every time I see that, I just want to be like, Derp, 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 Derp. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think you'd be happy if you said it that way. <laughs> um, then we have a uh, dragon kiff with ninety nine fire making on December twenty eighth. Uh, Lorasaurus with ninety nine mining on December twenty eighth. We have the black Nick skin. <laughs> Nick skin. Okay, with um, ninety nine magic on December twenty seventh. Uh, again, we have the black Nick skin with. 99 Thieving on December 27th. We have Mood Dragon X with 99 Defense on the 27th. We have Yahoo with 99 Ranged on December 27th. We have one RYB with one 99. Rib. Oh, one rib. Ah, there we go. One rib with 99 Hunter on December 26th. Uh, X Sandy Claws X with 99 Divination on December 26th. We have Far with 99 Agility on Christmas on the 25th. Yeah. Um, we have the Black Mexican with 99 Construction on the 24th. And Lusha with 99 Construction on December 24th. Uh, Lusha again with 99 ranged on the 24th. We have Alex Peaks with 99 agility on the 23rd. We have Lanakia, Lanakia, okay, with 99 prayer December 23rd. X Sandy Claws with 99 construction on the 23rd. Uh,. I lost my place. Hold on. Um, Dime with 120 defense on December 22nd. Alex Peaks with 20 or with 99 mining on the 21st. Harlot Man with 99 agility on the 21st. Black Mexican with 99 defense on December 20th. We have Kazanda with 99 Hunter on December 20th. One, two, three, four, we're cool. With 99 runecrafting, woodcutting, and construction on the 19th. All three of those. Um, you have Love Natural with 99 Thieving on the 19th. We have Dragon Kiff with 99 Thieving on the 18th. Uh, Kazanda with 99 Invention on December 18th. And <sighs> Shamrock Gaga. Sam, Sham, Sam, oh boy, even I messed that one up. Shamrock <laughs> Sage, I'd say. There we go. It's Shamrock Sage. Okay. With 99 Herb Lore on December 18th. And uh, Tychus Fuego with 99 Construction on December 18th. That's what happens when you don't do a show for two <sighs> weeks. <laughs> And people play RuneScape over a holiday. They apparently play a lot of RuneScape over the holiday. 
Uh, did you notice that the list is uh, grouped by names now? Yes, and I I appreciate that. It worked out worked out well. Yeah, I figure that's the least we can do for um, organizing that. So, yeah, congratulations no, everybody on all your achievements. I'd like to get a ninety nine on Christmas Day, but I don't have any more ninety nines to get. Oh, I guess you have to go to one twenty then. Yeah. Get your 120, Shane. Get your 120 grind on. All right. Well, I'll talk about that uh, in what have we been doing, but I think it's time for your pick of the week. Oh, man. I've got I've got a pick of the week, and this is a broad pick of the week. I was, I was the meaning wish. to ask you, which one should I link? Tell us what it is and tell me you which should one. Link, is- you should link all of them because they are all awesome. All right. So my pick – of the week is the witcher you need to experience this in whichever way you choose whether it's reading the books which are excellent playing the games uh, especially the witcher 3 wild hunt unbelievably good game or the witcher series on netflix i'm telling you i i've watched it twice already i've watched the whole season twice uh, i'm going into my third time like that's how good it is. Wow. Like, I absolutely love it. So it's got um, Henry Carvel, the dude that played Superman most recently, okay. I think. Dude, he is such a good Geralt. Like, he it, he is so, so good at it. Um, it's such a good show. It's a really good show. Are you familiar with The Witcher at all? No, Shane? I'm not. I've, I've heard of the game. I'm, I'm wondering, where did it start? Was the book first? Yes, um, it started with the books, and um, the games are an ex- are later, I think, than, than the books. But they're not exactly the same. There's you know there's differences um, between the two, uh, and there has been some rivalry between the author and and CD Projekt Red. But that's all been patched up, and they're all a happy family now. Um, the series, the Witcher series on Netflix, is based um, from the books. Um, and it, like I said, it's, it's really, really good. So witchers are like monster hunters, essentially. Like they're not quite they They start as humans, but then they go through a process of mutation so that they aren't wimpy little humans anymore because you would be killed by monsters if you were. So, um, they have like one of the most notable things is they have like cat eyes can like they got the vertical kind of cat eyes and they can see really well in the dark they enhanced seeing hearing smell all of this stuff um and like you you see that in the show like the uh the sword fights are man they're good like it's really good uh but like i said no matter what no matter what you want to experience the lore of the Witcher in whether it's the books the games or the, the series now um i highly highly recommend it because it's it's just so uh so fun um you know i mean we we all must like fantasy to some extent right i mean we play a fantasy game so um this is a lot of fun uh yeah i mean it's just it's a lot of fun shane you'll probably there's a couple little couple little places where you'll have to turn your head on the show (laughs) but other than that, <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, I've even like like I watched. I, so I, I bought the game back in 2015, right? Um, and loved it. I mean, I loved the game. I never quite finished it, um, but over break they had, uh, you know, the winter sale on. So I actually picked up a season pass, which was cheaper than buying the DLC. So I got all of the DLC for like eight bucks. And for anybody awesome. uh, who missed the winter sale, there is a Steam Lunar New Year, New Year sale around the corner too. So, yeah, yeah. So um, I went ahead and I, I have Blood and Wine now, and um, something Stone, Hands of Stone, something like that. Anyway, it's another like forty hours of, of a campaign um, to play. Um, so I, I was familiar with that, but then over break, I watched the series. Um, is there is and, there is there tie over between the series, the books, the game? Yes, yeah. Is there tie over from the game into the series at all? Um, yeah, I mean the characters. Like you're familiar with all all of the characters. They're they're telling um, 
a little bit different story okay a little bit later I, I, but i guess the, what i'm the asking is it the, the same, same uh timeline and the same continuity yes but it's in different places okay. essentially um the game or is the latest those are post books which would make the post show sure Especially. sure yeah. all right fair enough yeah yeah I mean, that's the best way like i'm i'm kind of i'm not new to the game i'm new to like the books and and i the series but soon as soon as this came out i went back and started playing that again and apparently a lot of other people did too because like like it had a hundred thousand concurrent um players this week for a game that came out in 2015 yeah that single player the single player right okay <laughs> we're not playing with each other <laughs> like it's a single player game right um if that tells you like any indication on uh, how popular this is and i even went it and bought um i think i bought like three of the books um to, you know because i had some uh, audible credits it's good stuff man that's my pick of the week take it and whatever uh, medium you enjoy the most, whether that's that's gaming or reading or watching, you can get it in any one of those. All righty, sounds good. Uh, what have we been up to? And you know, as I mentioned um, over Christmas break in December, I finished up Yak Track, which was which was very fun. I really enjoyed that, um, and you know, I found it so oddly satisfying. Um, to see the the yak track thing you go to the very bottom task one and you just click up at the top and it goes shoo, all the way up and you <laughs> see it complete so um that was that was fun i enjoyed that and it was a good way of um shifting around the game and doing variety and whatnot i cannot wait uh for the next one i'm a bit conflicted because you know i'm definitely going to do all four of them this year and if you do that with Bonds, that's half the price of the Premier Club on its own. But I have a philosophical objection to getting Premier Club because I'm still on the grandfathered $5 plan. And granted, yes, I'll go back to it next year if I if I decide not to get Premier Club in 2021. But I don't know. It just feels weird abandoning that, you know? Oh, I, I, I feel you. I thought that I was on that until – about a year ago, maybe not even a year, might have been six months ago, and there must have been some time in like 2013 or 14, somewhere around there, that I must have lapsed for a week because I'm at like the seven Ooh. seven dollar. Well, then it's totally yeah. worth it for you. Yeah, yeah. So this was this was actually the first year I've ever done it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, aside from that, as I mentioned, and as you could hear, um, it was a Christmas vacation filled with nasal epidemics of whatnot that you know kind of put a damper on things but thankfully it was on and off it wasn't all the way through so that was good um but aside from that i have actually gone back to doing some wood cutting and i'm gonna say it i wish there was a method of wood cutting that was similar to the way mining works now where you can or you get more if you lean into it so to speak or you can just run like how we always knew it yeah, uh, I think that was part of our hope for the idols, and that didn't come to no quite come to pass. But the idols are good for you know sixty to eighty four, I think. So there's that. Yeah. Um. So uh, that that would be one thing I like at some point in the future. But beyond that, um, you know, farming herbs herb runs for some reason toad flax have shot up. So. There's that. I'm still running the dinosaur breeding project. We're kind of low on eggs at the moment, but if you still need any of the uh, dinosaurs, I can produce most of them. I'm working on getting some of the other breeds down, but you know, if you want any dinosaurs, just let me know. It'll take a couple days because we've got to put them in the breeding pen and breed them out, but um, I have at least one of each family. I have... You know, I have one of the tops, I have one of the bird ones, and I have one of the Rex's ones at least. So, I mean, if you want one of those just for the uh, ingredients, you let me know. If you want a specific one, you can PM me in game, Shane12088, and I'll see what I have. I don't have any Varanosaurs or Jadinkos. I don't use those. I don't see much value in those, so I'm not doing those. Um, but, yeah, if you want any dinosaurs, still still running that, so PM me. Um, I got my first money tree seed, believe it or not. Ooh, so I planted cool. that. That's growing. That should be done later today. Um, nice. but you know, aside from that, 
not too much main progress, just woodcutting, farming, and finishing up yak track. Very cool. And you? Um, well, I'm not going to lie. I, I have been so busy with some with things that I got over Christmas. Um, like I got like Jedi Fallen Order. Um, so I work, worked through that story. Still working through the Red Dead story. Uh, worked through the Mortal Kombat 11 story. Um, so I just got back into RS about a week ago. Um, got the premiere club. This is the first time in all of my years of RS to get the premiere club. Um, but it was awesome because you get those tokens, you know, where you can get stuff from the past. And yeah. I've always wanted that damn lava hawk and oh, I got okay. it now. So I'm like, yay. And you got the, you got the T-bone, which yeah. is, so I have like a outfit that's kind of like a Indiana Jones style archaeologist looking outfit. So it's perfect with that. Love it so much. Um, I, I guess you get that artifact too, but I haven't even used it yet. Like there's this premier club. Like I, it's so packed, like it is packed full of stuff. Um, so I've been doing, so I got that. And then I've, I've been trying to finish off uh, my thieving because I think I'm going to finish off the one twenties that I am close to. Um, rather than I was waiting and I was going to use them all on a double XP weekend. But since we don't exactly know the future of those and how they're going to be structured, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, knock the 10 mil off. I have a summoning. I got about six mil left on thieving and another about 10 on, uh, strength. So, uh, I could have, you know, three more one twenties within a month or two if I try. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. And, you know, I'll just take this moment to um, thank everybody for the support that you offered in 2019 and we're going to continue into 2020 as we have been. Um, So I'll just say go watch the Decade in Review podcast if you're a Patreon supporter and if you're not, little as a dollar a month, you get access to it. And our Year in Review podcast as well was very fun as well. You can find all of that and more at update.rsbnb.com for the Year in Review and patreon.com slash rsbnb for the Decade in review, and that caps off the first show of 2020. You can join us in the Friends Chat at Bits Bites. You can subscribe to the podcast on any number of podcast services out there. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, YouTube, and of course Spotify. All that and more at update.rsbnb.com slash subscribe. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. Take care, everyone. See ya.